Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming here. Um, it's hard to believe that, you know, starting out was just a little project with a couple of guys working on it that we actually would be big enough to justify our own conference. So, and, and each and every one of you had a part in that. I mean, it, this, it's not, it takes a lot of people to make something like KeyCat happen. And so it's not just me. I just get all the glory. So for those of you, um, a lot of this is going to be similar to the, what you've seen at FOSDEM, if you've seen my FOSDEM talk from this year, and, and those of you who were at FOSDEM. But I have a really exciting project announcement I'm going to make at the end, so I'm going to force you to sit through and listen to the boring part all over again. So, so here we go. Okay, so what, what's been going on with KeyCAD recently? Well, for those of you who don't know, 5.1 was released in March, and um, that was pretty awesome to get that done, it was because it was a lot of work in a short amount of time. And just this morning, I tagged the first uh, bug fix release of that, 5.1.2. So that's ready to go. Um, for those of you who haven't been in the, aren't on part of the uh, development mailers li mailing list, um, we had a, a, a capital campaign after version 5 was released. Um, and we raised over 70,000 Swiss francs in less than 60 days. And that was pretty impressive, really caught us off guard. And that's around 70,000 US dollars for <clears throat> those of you and don't, don't know uh, Swiss francs. Um, so what's going on now? <clears throat> well, version six is now open. We've been doing a lot of work on version six now. Um, most of the major work packages have either been drafted or they have developers assigned to them. So, and that work, a lot of that work's in progress. You see some of the work that Seth's doing, I wasn't even aware of that was going on, so that was news to me. So, so, and some of the other things that are interesting that those of you who aren't in the day-to-day -day operation of the, you know, see what's going on in the project. Um, Eisler, who, you know, Patrick and Felix are here, they've been making donations. So if you've bought any boards through them, you'll see that the donation link to KeyCAD. You know, thanks for that. It's a, it's a great way to give back to the project. Um, for those of you who don't know, System76 use KeyCAD to design the main board for their Thelio desktops. And um, if, you don't, if you haven't seen them yet, go take a look at them. They're really nice. Um, they created a funny little quirky promotional video. And at the end of last year, they had, I think it's, I can't remember the exact dates, but at the end of the year, they did a, a, a donated a percentage of their sales, uh, profits that during this short period of time in their promotion to the KeyCAD project. So. The donations are good. There's a, uh, the, the gentleman who runs Tech Explorations wrote a book, KeyCAD Like a Pro. <clears throat> There's a special edition of that, that half of the profits from each one of the sales of that book get donated to KeyCAD. And one of the questions I get asked a lot um, is about KeyCAD in the corporate world, because there's a lot of maker people. There's a lot of, you know, uh, academic people in the academic world. So... <clears throat> you know, people you know, want, want to know whether or not KeyCAD's actually being used in the commercial world. Well, I got contacted by Microchip, and I found out that they're offering some of their, uh, key, uh, actually a KeyCAD class in their master class series. So they're training their, um, their um, customers how to use KeyCAD. So obviously KeyCAD's getting some traction in the corporate world. So that's I always find that more interesting than anything because I'm a, I'm a double E by trade anyway, so I use KeyCAD for my day job. Um, for those of you, I'm sure you're well aware of this, if you use KeyCAD, the sim, all the libraries have just been incredible in the last two years. I mean, if you go back and look at where our libraries were, say, version 4 release and where they are today, it's pretty impressive. You know, it's, and there's, like, lots of sources now, you know, DigiKey offers libra uh, library, Snap EDA offers libraries. There's a lot of people, there's a big inf ecosystem building up around KeyCAD for, you know, to save, you know, engineers time from having to develop their own footprints, their own symbol libraries, et cetera. Well, ah. So, we added, in the last year and a half, we added, Seth is including one of those in that group, we added four new lead developers that basically doubled the lead, lead development team. And that's significant. That's really kind of pushed um, the speed of the development of KeyCAD. So like the, the big change, the, the, the large number of changes you've seen in the last year, year and a half, it's due to the new development team. Because my time is fixed. So, and I have, you know, only so much time to give because like most everybody, I'm a, I'm a volunteer and it's very part-time. 
<clears throat> so thanks to those guys for um, coming on board. We're starting to see a lot of new, um, as John mentioned earlier, you know, if you want to be interested in being a developer, we've actually seen quite a few uh, people starting to submit patches, lots of new names on the, the dev mailing list, and I always find that really encouraging. So the more people we can get on board up to speed with the code base because it is complicated and is not a, it's a non-trivial project. So the fact that people are interested in, in digging into such a complex project and contributing is really encouraging. And of course, you're all here. We have the first ever KeyCAD key conference, which, yes, and give yourselves a hand. I all made that happen. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the 5.1 release. For those of you who don't know, we, we know, we, we have a release policy, we had to break it for 5.1 because we ran into some issues with WX widgets, which is our widgets library, and WX Python, which converted the WX Phoenix on Linux. We had some real major build issues, and, and um, when you build WX widgets with GTK3, it made Linux completely unusable. So we had to come up with a short-term solution so we didn't throw our Linux users under the bus. And basically, most of that was porting the schematic editor to using the new rendering system. So that's, that was the, the, the bulk of it. But there was also, you also got Python 3 support out of that and a few other things like custom schematic, um, graphic line styles. <clears throat> we disabled the legacy canvas in the board editor, so now you have to use the, the, new, the new, new canvases for all editing. We also, now we modified the Python scripting to support Python 3. Um, there was some other development already going on, so we included that in 5.1. So that's where the complex footprint support came from. There was a huge amount of um, UI changes. Uh, we got a new developer who's retired uh, Adobe, former Adobe employee, and he's a bit of a madman when it comes to getting work done. So you'll, you should have noticed a, a huge improvement in our UI design over even 5.0. Um, we have bi-directional net and board trace highlighting that was added during the, fi during the five develop or the 5.1 development cycle. There's going to be some significant improvements in that for version six. Um, we got free via placement out of that. That was already something that was in there. And of course, we had to port the Gerber file viewer to the new, the, the new uh, canvas, the new rendering system. So because we had to get rid of the old legacy canvas stuff. So that's basically version 5.1. So version 6 is already, we've already opened the master repo. So lots of work has already started on that. So I'm just going to go over the highlights. There's a lot more than this. It's probably a list twice as long as this of things that the end user will probably never see. This is just the big stuff. One of the, one of the probably fundamental things we're going to change this go around in version 6 is the schematic and symbol library file formats and those have to be done pretty early on because they lay the format or the foundation for a lot of the changes that we want to add to both the schematic file editor and the board file editor things like gate and pin swapping those kind of things are all dependent on that um, We've already started porting the schematic editor over to the new, new tool framework. So if you know, you're used to the way the tools work in PCB, you always know how they don't work the same way in the, schem the schematic editor. That's in process now. We're going to allow, hopefully, allow system fonts in the schematic and symbol editor. So you, instead of our fixed font that we, we've provided, at least, in the, at least for the symbol in the schematic editor, we're going to allow to use any of any system font. Um, we're going to add Python scripting support for the schematic objects. Right now, we only have that for the board objects. Hopefully, that will get done in version 6. <clears throat> There's real-time netlist generation that, that's happening on, that kind of happens in the background on the fly. John Evans, who was up here earlier, he's the one that worked on that. Um, that's already in, that's actually been committed, and we've actually done quite a bit of bug working on that. In fact, they're working on some optimizations on that now. Um, we want to do some orthogonal rubber banding, you know, wire rubber banding support for the schematic editor. That was something that we were going to add. We want to significantly improve the electronics rules check. Um, what, what we have right now is a little weak, but some of that will come with the new file formats as well. Drag and drop from the symbol library browser to the schematic editor, so you just grab a 
symbol and drag it into your schematic instead of having to go through the, use the chooser tool like you do now. <clears throat> um, we're going to have pin and gate swapping with automatic forward and backward annotation between the schematic editor and the, the <laughs> this is the one lone clap. At least it'll make one guy happy. Um, so, so <laughs> between the schematic and board editors, um, we're going to, we've already started making some um, improvements to the DRC coverage. Uh, we want to support keep out zones and uh, board outline or edge cut layers in the footprints. So, you know, there's, yeah, <laughs> that's a bigger contingent there. Right? Um, so we got that. Uh, that's in, uh, that hasn't started yet, but that's got planned on done. We, we added, we just added the zone hatch filling. So, or hatch zone filling. So that is done it's, and, you know, is so you can check it out if you want to run nightlies. So you, don't, you can't just, you, know, you can do something besides just solid fills for right now. Uh, we want to improve the dimension tools. A lot of people have requested um, some more stuff on that. Uh, we want to add, we, we, have, we added per corner chamfering of uh, rectangular foot, foot, footprint pads. That's already done. So you can you know, chamfer any one or any combination of the four corners of a, of a rectangular pad. Um, we've already started talking about we're going to completely redesign the, the layout system or the layout constraint system for the board editor. We have an initial draft, specification draft, but that's going to happen this to go around. And we're going to try to make it really flexible and a lot, a lot more complete than just the simple net class stuff that we have now. Um, the board editor allows you now to import SVG. That's obviously been done. It's actually disabled in 5.1, but you can turn it on secretly. Uh, but it's there. Um, and it's available, at, you know, if you run nightly builds, it's full, available all the time. Um, we're, gonna, we, we're adding uh, support for uh, curved rat, uh, rat's nests, uh, adding color to individual uh, nets, and visibility support so you can turn individual nets on and off. Um, the, rat, the curve, the curve um, part of that's already been committed. Uh, the, uh, the other two parts will be done later. Um, we're going to add support to the board file format for real net ties instead of the pseudo net ties that we have right now. <laughs> so it sounds like we're moving in the right direction anyway. Um, we're going to improve thermal reliefs for custom pads. One of the things that's kind of tricky when you have custom pads is how do you, thermal, how do you break out the thermal reliefs from an odd shaped pad. So we're going to work on that. And we're going to support polygons with true art corners. I think that's some of what Seth is working on. Um, we want to add uh, selection filtering so that you can select specific objects. Like you only want to select, you want to you know, do a block select of just all the vias or all the, the footprints. You can do that. Um, <clears throat> we want to, one of the things that people request a lot is we want to add um, being able to drag footprints and keep the Traces connected. People have been requesting that for a while. <laughs> Tom, where's Tom? <laughs> you done yet? Uh, uh, there's been the people have asked us for you know opacity in 3D models so that you can look through. You know, you can stack models and look through them to do um, your mechanical designs. So we're going to try to add that. We want to get we want to support IPC 2581 at some point. I don't. It'll probably initially be just exports, export support. Maybe eventually we'll get the import half of that done. And uh, another thing that some people are working on is finally having a stable Python API. One of the problems is, is right now we just use the raw swigged out. You know, we use swig as our Python wrapper generator. And so you get the raw API, right? So if there's any changes that you know, the, the lead development team makes, your scripts break. So if you've, if you've ever done a lot of scripting in KiCad, you know that's that, how that happens. So we're going to hopefully be able to provide a, a stable Python uh, interface so that as the underlying API changes, it'll hide all that stuff. So that's basically the, the front-facing stuff, the stuff the end user will see. A lot of stuff that goes on under the hood. There's a lot of refactoring, code cleaning that seems to never end. Um, That'll, a lot of, there's probably a list equally that long that'll also happen during the six development. When six will be out, I have no idea. Usually our typical burn time between major versions has been around two years. But I think we're gonna be able to, I think we're gonna be able to 
squeeze that down. I say that now. Well, we have more developers, for one. We have a lot more developers working on it now, which definitely helps. And there's another reason that one of the things in the past is, is because I'm, I do this part-time, I don't scale. And, it, and it, every, I think it's become this, the, the point that I'm the bottleneck. Well, remember that good news I told you about? I'm not the bottleneck anymore. I got hired by WIT to work full-time on KeyCAD. So I'll be able to... So I'll be able to... So now those patches won't sit around for a month till I get around to reviewing them, you know? So I'll be able to work full-time starting, actually starting yesterday. So I am now a full-time employee at WIT, and I want to thank Mr. Jeff Carr. Is he back there? Put your hand up, Jeff, for hiring me to work on... Um, yeah, it's an amazing contribution to the project. So now, now, you know, now I won't be the bottleneck. You know, I won't be the guy that you have to wait for me to answer, hey, do we want to do that? We do, do we want to do this? And that's been an ongoing problem now for about, I'd say, a good year, you know, where I'm the guy that's slowing everything down. So it's, it's really good news. And so say thanks to Jeff. Um, if you're wondering about WIT, WIT's a startup, and they're, they're, one of their goals is to basically open source the entire, they want the entire stack to be open, and especially hardware, because that's kind of that area right now that's not real open, and so they're pushing that, and because KeyCAD is part of that ecosystem, that's why he hired me to work on KeyCAD so we could accelerate the development. So thank you to Jeff again for that. That's awesome. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you. It's, all, it's always humbling for me to stand up here and, and do this because there's a lot of work that goes on that I don't do and that a whole lot of other people do. And I, I just get to be the front guy and it, deservedly or undeservedly so, here I am. But I, I want to thank as many people as I can. I want to thank all the sponsors who stepped up and made Key, KeyCon possible. The, you saw the list of sponsors. It was really impressive for a first conference. And so thank you to everyone who, did, who, who, made, who sponsored KeyCon. Um, I really want to say a special thanks to Chris Gamble. When Chris came, when Chris presented me with this idea, I'm like, man, that's a great idea, Chris, but I've got zero time to help you, none. So I said, if you can take this ball and run with it, I'm okay with it. And so you should thank Chris because we're all sitting here because of him and his effort. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. And, and as... And as always, thanks to all the developers who, who, who generously donate their time. And by developer, yep, thank you. I, I'm not just talking about the lead development team. I'm talking about the librarians, the translators, the documentation people, the package builders, the people who maintain the website. There's just dozens and dozens of people who just work tirelessly to make this happen. And it's, I'm flattered that they're willing to you know, commit their time to this project. So thank you. Um, Thank you for you, all our users, for your, your continued support and interest in KeyCAD. I mean, it's phenomenal how much it's grown from 13 years ago when I started with the project. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And thanks, everyone, for coming to the, my key, keynote. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll have something to celebrate tonight. Thank you. So you, you want to take questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's easier, I, you know. Rather than me asking, answering the same question 20 times. We can do that, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. You guys, where's the lead? Tom Morrison?